Hello and welcome back to this episode of the Peak Results Academy podcast. I'm your host, Rich Fournier. And in this episode, I sit down with the managing partner of Rec Canada, Jazz Takar. Now, Jazz um, helps run the number one Rolla Page team in all of Canada, Rec Canada. And their team completed nearly 700 transactions in all of 2019. And in this episode, Jazz shares how making a firm decision about what he wanted was an absolute game changer for his business and the importance of focusing on your what and your why versus the how. He explains how to start getting content out to potential clients in an authentic way and offers tips on how to choose the right team in this competitive business. You don't wanna miss this one, so stay tuned. Have you ever wondered why some people thrive in all areas of their life? Welcome to the Peak Results Academy podcast with your host, Rich Fournier. Each week, we interview industry experts who consistently dominate in the fields of health, business, and beyond. Our mission is to share their personal struggles and strategies so that you can create your own peak results. Welcome to the Academy. Hey everybody, Rich Forney here for the Peak Results Academy podcast. I'm your host, of course, and today I'm super excited to be having one of the managing partners of the number one Royal Page team across Canada, Jazz Takar. How are you, sir? I'm amazing. Thanks so much for having me, Rich. I'm, uh, I'm pumped and excited to bring as much value as I possibly can to your listeners today. Just to um, remind some of our listeners, of course, our podcast is about what creates peak results in someone's business and life. And of course, today we're focusing on the real estate business, real estate agents, transactions. Man, you guys have had some outstanding results over the past few years. Number one with Rolla Page Canada, um, just shot 700 transactions last year in 2019. Um, team of 25 producing agents plus a- 33, 33 to be exact, Rich, sorry. Now you're 33 agents. And my job today is to dig deep within your mind and your life to figure out what and how you're creating such a, an amazing peak result in your business. Well, look, we are, uh, you know, not only the 33 uh, realtors that we have on our team and big, big shout out to them because uh, there's such a huge part in those uh, almost 700 transactions a year. But then there's 10 support staff that are here on a regular basis with me um, that uh, really take us to the next level. And, and, and that 10 support staff, which is a little different than most other real estate companies, consists of uh, a media squad of, of five people now, uh, f- six people, sorry. A uh, full-time videographer, part-time videographer. Uh, uh, we have a full-time graphic designer and two cartoonists now uh, that I'm so excited and uh, to have on because we're producing content. Um, something that I'm very nostalgic about is cartoons, and we're trying to bring value uh, in the real estate market as well as entrepreneurship uh, through different mediums. And so that 10 support staff uh, really, really keep this machine going. Right. So let's talk about the brand Rec Canada. Um, it's an organizational structure, team focused, non individual focused branding, which is the brand name Rec Canada. Why did you guys go that route? Well, first, we, we actually had our own brokerage. REC stands for Real Estate Center. That was the actual brokerage. And I guess to get cool and get with the times of 2020, we we, we abbreviated it to REC Canada. Um, um, We're under the umbrella of Royal LePage Signature. So about 10, 11 years ago, we decided at that time, there was three partners. There's currently myself and my business partner who's actually been on this podcast, um, Simeon. Uh, We decided to go under the umbrella of Royal LePage Signature really because we we wanted to focus on what we were good at, which was marketing and sales. What we quickly found out that what takes up a lot of our time is all the administrative stuff, right? Like making sure you have the trust accounts, dealing with Rico if you had to, you have agents, things come up. Um, if you had to, you know, telephones, making sure the lines are running. We said, let's forget all that. We'll pay, you know, we'll pay a small like 10 points on, on the operation and have the structure, have an actual office space. And let's focus on what we're good at, which is marketing and sales. And it was the biggest game changer for us because just you don't have to take up that much bandwidth now. Like now, now you're focused on what really matters. 
And more importantly, Rich, I think what we really enjoy, like I enjoy this. I enjoy talking to someone like yourself, bringing value to people and seeing what, what awareness this gets and doing more deals. For us, it's about meeting people, building relationships, helping them invest out of that 700 transactions that we do, about 350 are, are investment properties. And so that's what we like to do, help people build out their portfolios, not worry about the telephone bill or the hydro bill. Now that's us. Some people excel at that. And if, if somebody who's watching or listening right now, if that's what you excel at, then do you and do that. It just wasn't our cup of tea. Understand. And when you look at the um, churn rate in the real estate business, um, why you? Like why you? Why, why, like when you sit down at nighttime and you, you sit down, you have a glass of wine, you have scotch. I see Simeon's drinking scotch sometimes. Like, why you? Why were you able to not only survive in the real estate game, um, but now um, participate in a thriving top tier, top half of 1% business model? Um, what made you so different? Building relationships, networking, connecting with people. I've been in sales and service personally myself for 25 years, different products. So newspapers at 12 years old, uh, shoe sales, the Al Bundy um, in me came out probably in uh, uh, when I was about 15 years old. Then banking, which was like mortgages, loans, and lines of credits, then car sales, and now real estate. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like Real estate just happens to be the byproduct of what we have what we sell, the service we provide. It, like myself, I didn't even really know anything about cars ever. I didn't even know about homes. What I did know and what I was always good at was building relationships. And then as, as, as long as I thought about those relationships long term, the average person knows 200 people. And so if, if, if you know 200 people that know 200 people and so on and so forth, your network now is 40,000 people. In the greater Toronto area, if you do 40 transactions even, that's a real, that's like, you're living very well, okay? Maybe in the top 3% in, in, in the country, okay? And, and if, if, if you just focus on connecting with those 200 people that you know, they become your sales arm. So we stopped worrying about cold business a long time ago. Now, if you're just starting out, um, um, or if, if part of your, your business model is cold calling, door knocking, I got nothing against you. Like you got to do what, what works well for you. For us, it was just, we like to have fun. So we're going to build relationships. We're going to throw parties. We like to do a lot of party. As you said, scotch and wine, that's our special wine and cheeses we've been doing for 10 years. Now we stepped it up. We get the parties catered. We like to throw big parties, have people around us, um, um, connect with them. And then what inevitably happens is they, they introduce us to their family and friends. And so it's always been about building relationships for me because now I can take the network that I built. And if I decide to start selling podcast mics uh, next week, I'm not going to have a problem. I'll be able to do it. If it's water bottles the next day, the product might change, but that's never really the game plan. The game plan is build out the network. Your, your net worth is going to be determined by your network. And there's a reason for it because, because it's also like cheaper to do. You don't have to spend a lot of money up front. It's again, just comes down to building those relationships. With the speed of the internet and the ability to become your own media empire, because I know you guys have your own, you're focusing on your media empire now. Um, I know it's, your spend is definitely getting up there with your social media stuff, right? For sure. Definitely investing in it. Well, we do 20 pieces of content. We do 20 pieces of content daily, Rich, on all the platforms. Yeah. Okay. And so we make sure that we give people video, audio, and the written word because everyone consumes a little different. Even myself, I might have a YouTube video running at home. I'm not really watching it. I'm listening because I'm doing other things. Some people just like to read. They don't want to hear a voice. They don't want to look like I think I'm good looking rich and I think you're a good looking guy, but maybe people don't want to see us. They, they don't even want to hear us. They want to read what we have to say. So we decided to do uh, the, the, the media spend and, and, and build out the, the media arm of our business about two and a half years ago, almost coming up to three years now. And uh, definitely, I mean, I, we have a full-time videographer as I went through, like these, everyone's in-house. I don't outsource anything. Um, why? Because of the speed aspect of it before we built out the team uh, the media arm 
it took four or five days to get a 30 second clip from somebody, right? And so now I can do a 30 second clip. Like this podcast, once you send it over, send over the link to me, I'm going to chop it up 30, 40 different ways, video, audio, and the written word. I'm able to do that because my media score is right across the hall for me. Um, and, and so, yes, it does cost money to set up. You don't need all the people that I just mentioned. I think you just really need, like there's a, there, there's a method to the madness of, of who we hire, when we hire them, but you really just need to start out with what you're comfortable and natural at. And so for me, the camera was not something I was natural at. Like I, I didn't like it. It didn't feel comfortable for me. Now, I mean, because of the pandemic, the one of the downsides for me is the fact that I don't have four or five cameramen around me. I love the camera, but it all started with a mic. In fact, it wasn't even this one that's probably $200. I bought a $75 mic from Staples and that's where it started because I was like, oh, this audio thing I like. Like I don't, I talk on the phone all the time. Nobody's yet told me they don't like the, the sound of my voice. And so I'm going to project, I'm just going to do this podcast thing. And then over time, I, came comfortable, I became comfortable with, with video. Now, Rich, if you ask me to uh, uh, write an email longer than two paragraphs, I can't do it. It just takes me a while. Again, going back to bandwidth, it takes, it takes up a lot of that bandwidth in my brain. And so I don't write long emails or copies. I have somebody on staff. But if you think about my, like my director of sales and marketing, Laura, she's a great writer. In fact, she's ghostwriting my book for me. Um, she's a fantastic writer. She's very natural at that. And so again, anybody who's listening, I want you to find what you're natural, like what comes natural to you and then go all in on that. Makes a ton of sense to me. When you look at your organizational structure and the people that are working with you today, how do you keep them so motivated to continue to work with you when, you know, they could make different decisions and, and brand and do the things that you guys are doing? How do you keep them so engaged? Look, we, 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 we have uh, long conversations with them when they come on board. We, we, we continuously ask what's going on, not only in their business life, but their personal life. We're really just trying to reverse engineer what they want. I mean, do we get some odd requests about getting paid more or, or taking more time? Yeah, maybe, uh, but very rare. It, it really, our culture here is one of, uh, uh, of servicing our clients with white gloves. And so we go to the ends of earth for whatever we have to do for our clients. Um, and when it comes to our staff and it comes to our realtors, they're really open to do whatever they want. We're here to support them. We actually turned the old team business model up on its head where, where you'll usually hear um, um, like the celebrity agent, Joe Blow's real estate team. What yeah. we did is we said, look, what we're here to do, there is no, it's not Jazz Tackers, REC team, or CMOSes, or Laura's. It's every individual. So we have Jennifer Popo, who's been in the business for 25 years, like a shark, a, like a massive, she would negotiate my own property if I was going to sell. She, she's been in the business for so long, knows what she's doing. We're just here to support her. That's all she can. She's able to go out and, and brand herself. We don't hold her to that. She has to use REC Canada's branding or Royal LePage Signatures branding. We're here to support her. She, I think, if you ask her, uh, been with us for eight years, nine years now, I think she'll, she'll tell you the reason she's here because she can pick up the phone, get a hold of us. We're always trying new things. It's a place of a lot of failures. This, if there's anything that we've done really well is failed a lot. And I like that because it's just taught us lessons. And the team, I think, likes that. It, it, there's more to just making money, right? Um, I think we all know that. Um, but we, we, we practice it every single day by, by asking, how can we reverse engineer what you're looking for, Tyler? Tyler, for example, is a great example. He's our air traffic controller, um, our director of real estate concierge services. And at the start, he wanted to be an agent. He we trained him, uh, uh, molded him into being a realtor, out and about, showing homes, doing deals. And after two years, he's like, I don't like, I hate this, man. Like, I don't want to be 12, 13 hours like you guys. It's just not what I want to do. And I was like, well, what do you want to do? And he's like, I would love to be in the office, nine to five, making phone calls. I want to start a family. And big shout out, he just had an 11 pound baby girl not too long ago, a couple of days ago uh, to be exact. And I said, look, that job doesn't exist right now. Let's, let's see if we can build something out. That happened two years ago, Rich. It was the best move we made because now we have someone that just calls out to all of our clients 
and just says, hey, Rich, did you need um, a plumber for your property in Saskatchewan? We don't service Saskatchewan, but we can find you someone. And just going out and, again, building relationships with our clients, we're becoming top of mind. Yeah, you know what? So I, I feel like the teams, teams like yours are going to eat the industry. Um, when I look out, there is no way an individual agent can perform at that level. It is impossible. There's no way. No. And so, it, well, it's, it's not. You just, it's physically impossible to do that, right? To generate leads, to communicate with those leads, build your CRM systems, do the follow-up, do your video production, do your social media, go show properties, go listing presentations, negotiate yell, scream at each other, talk to the lawyers, like, it's impossible. Look, so, I mean, you're I telling me that the game is you. I was, I was going to say, yeah, definitely. I think what most more agents need to start to think of is, is being okay to leave some money on the table. Yeah. Like, I, I, that was a big shift in my mind as well, and that happened about, um, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years. So about year eight, year nine, I was like, you know what? I just, I'm not going to be able to do more than the 50, 60 deals that I was doing with one assistant. That's just not going to happen anymore. I need to shift this. I need to leave money on the table. Let other people eat. There's enough on, there's enough pies. Like the pie is big enough. If we run out, we'll build more. It's a saying around here. We say it all the time. We believe in it. Um, but yeah, like it, you, to scale, you need to, you need to be able to leave money on the table. Now I, myself, like I wear a t-shirt every single day. Like I don't, I'm not a, a suit kind of guy. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I'm just not comfortable in that setting. And so I don't spend a lot of money on anything. Like I don't really buy a lot of luxury and not again that there's nothing wrong with it that's just not who i am i'm willing to pump it pump it all back into the business because i just know i want to be here i want to be doing this for this is my hobby like i i don't come to work i haven't been i haven't worked in the last decade in all honesty and i'm it's not just i'm not just saying that like it truly is my hobby i do this for 14 15 hours a day every single minute of my day is consumed about how can we scale bigger how can we grow how is tyler feeling how is steven my director of media feeling how's my director of sales and marketing laura feel like what do i need to do more for her and him to be comfortable which will then allow us to all produce more and i'm okay i'm okay to wait it out i'm in no rush um i got more than i ever ever expected already and i think i think because i personally live in gratefulness so much more gets attracted to me like attracts like whatever you put your mind mind on like whatever you start to think about you'll you'll bring it about i'm actually picking up a new car rich in the next two days i never saw this car okay i got like i actually special ordered it with certain rims tinted windows never have seen this car before i signed the paperwork two days ago in the last two days i've seen two of the exact same vehicle that I'm picking up. They were always there. It's happening because there's a reticular activator in your brain that just got activated. It's now starting to look for that car. It's why pregnant women see pregnant women. It's not like they weren't there before. It's just because now your brain starts to look for it. So if you start to look for, well, look, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna build out my business. You need to, like, somebody who's listening right now needs to focus on the what and the why. The what is, what, what do you want? So your brain can start looking for it long before Google, this was working. Okay. The brain will look for what you, the brain will find what you're looking for. The why, because you want to stick to it for a long period of time. That's what's going to keep you going. The how is not up to us. The how's out there already. The opportunities exist. We just got to get in front of them. I think so many people spend too much time on the how. It's the what and the why I want people to spend time on. Sounds like you and I read the same books. There's a book called Psycho-Cybernetics that talks about your cybernetic mechanism. And this was written, I think, in the 60s. And, okay. And so you just dictated, you know, your reticular activating formation in the brain. What you're looking at and what you're thinking about, you start to see more of it because your brain's actually working on it. You should read the book. It's a fantastic book. I, I'm going to pick it up for sure. Is it on audio book? Because I haven't read a book in a long time. I have to be honest. I was going to send you a copy, but I'll let you download your own version. Okay, you're the best. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's the thought that counts. And so look, I, just, just to quickly to that point, see what Rich's mind was, guys? Like, he's thinking about, okay, I'm going to send a copy to jazz. I'm going to be very thankful for that. I'm going to look for how can I 
How can I give rich business? What is rich looking for? So that's where the magic is. You asked a question earlier, like how did you build it and why you? Because we're always looking for those opportunities. I think the favorite emails I get from my team are the ones like, uh, Jazz, uh, so-and-so uh, 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 just had somebody pass in their family. We sent a package, just need your approval on it. Um, so-and-so just had a baby. They just got a brand new job. Our whole team is always looking for those opportunities. So big shout out to you because it just talks about your character my man uh, your energy is fantastic i have a clearer understanding of why you're having the success that you guys are having if you were to advise an agent today would you say to them just focus on the what and the why more importantly yes the yeah so i want to give i want to give more value i mean that's from a mindset perspective yes just focus on the what and the why the how is not up to you the how will always appear from a tactical perspective if you're a realtor listening right now and i know majority of your realtors are very high performers uh, but if there's somebody who just landed on this that's new in the business the one thing that you have to get and do is get an assistant i um because we spoke about this earlier rich that that, that you cannot do everything on your own but more importantly, you shouldn't be doing everything. Like, I don't have a computer. So for two and a half years, I haven't touched a computer um, because I'm not good at them. Like, I, like, they take up too much of my time. And all I was ever really doing was searching MLS and sending out emails. So, in fact, about MLS, like, you can't, like, as, a, as an agent, you're probably not the only person that can do a comparative map market analysis or print listings or book your own showings. There's so much that most realtors are doing that they should not touch. There's only two things that people, agents should be doing and any salespeople uh, for that matter. Build relationships and meet and help them with the product and service. So meet people and then help them buy, sell, or invest in a home. Everything else should be delegated everything else deposit checks for sales signs lock boxes media all that all of that should be delegated out the only thing that people should worry about is meeting people and helping them buy sell it or, or, or invest into a home teams of the future that's it my man that's it look i, I got into this business 15 years ago because i sold cars to um uh, three gentlemen in the same month talking about because I wanted to get into the business. I wanted to, I actually thought I was getting, I was learning how to invest into real estate. I didn't even know I was signing up for the sales, like the sales part of it to be a realtor. Um, it shows, I don't have, I, I have nothing past a high school education, my man. It's all audio books and workshops and seminars for me. But the three gentlemen that I sold those cars to, they were probably making a little over 350, $400,000 a year. So back then, 15 years ago, they were probably doing 70, 80 deals, maybe even more. But those three gentlemen, English was probably like definitely their second language, if not their third. One of them had to have been like his fifth language. Like he hardly spoke the language, okay, of English. But what he was good at, he just met people. And he said what he had to say, which was probably, do you know of anyone that might be wanting, my, wanting advice? Whatever he did. Or he just door knocked a knock. Or he cold called on. I don't remember exactly, but those three gentlemen, I can tell you, that English wasn't even their first language. It was just the fact that they were willing to, they knew a lot of people. They just knew a lot of people. So it always comes down to that. How you're going to meet them, we'll figure that out after. Just understand the mindset that when it comes to sales, selling signs behind me, cabinet, shelves, whatever, real estate, the more people you know, the more chances you got to sell them on your product or service. Sounds like though, when you, when this, when you really got engaged in what you're doing, you made a decision and you didn't look left or right. For sure, especially with the media. So three years, almost coming up to three years, um, that was really when the biggest change happened. So the biggest evolution, the biggest jump in in our business happened once I decided that I'm gonna I'm gonna take control of this media thing and I'm gonna start speaking to the world. I'm gonna speak to the world about what I'm passionate about. Again, not only real estate. In fact, real estate's probably like the actual architecture of a home. I know nothing about it. I don't know how they're built. Like I know the basic stuff, but other than that, I, I don't really, I don't walk into a home a lot of times and say, Oh my God, it's beautiful. Like that's not who I am. I care about, like, I, I want to help people invest, uh, uh, build out their portfolios and in investing, but I want to speak to the world about my journey. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a kid from Rexdale, an area that most people don't, you know, when they drive through, they put their windows up, lock the doors kind of thing. An area where I was told that, a time where I was told that, you know, you're not going to be able to do much because my great, like I was flunking out of high school, just barely squeaked by. And so I'm going to talk about 
the fact that I did find a passion and I did go all in and I didn't think left or right. And so that's the content that I put out there. The more content that I put out there, like from an authentic, like th that I'm so authentic about it, I don't know how to spell. I don't know how to maybe articulate sometimes, but I just put it out there, the more people I meet. And so once I decided to do that, that I'm just going to, I'm going to be myself and whoever connects with me, awesome. Whoever doesn't connect with me, awesome. Like it's, it's okay. There's seven, 6.7 million people in the greater Toronto area. I truly need to, you know, help about 150 of them personally myself. What I do out of that 700 is 130 to 150 deals a year out of that 700. And then, and then just spend all my time with, with my crew and my squad around here. And that's it. That's all. I'm, and I'm going to do it from this desk. So I haven't shown a home in uh, coming up to three years. I don't leave this office. This is where I do all my podcasts, all the videos and all the sales happen from this desk. I decided that's how it's going to go. And, and, and then the world, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, put it in front of me. Do you say that um, the architecture of your social media push has elevated the brand and elevated the number of units sold in a given year? Definitely, because what happens now is when people come, when people come meet with me, the ice has already been broken. So this is coming from a guy that's only been sales and service for 25 years, real estate 15 as a person. So I'm always fighting that uphill battle. I've always used to fight, like, I got to break the ice. So do you know me yet, Rich? Or what do you know about, like, now people come and, the, and, and, and the light bulb happened exactly about 19, 20 months ago, husband and wife sitting in uh, this studio is rearranged a little differently. And uh, I, I go into a project, like, to the details of a project and why this investment sounds like it should be something that they should consider. And the wife cut me off. She's like, sorry, Jazz, like, can you stop? I'm thinking, what the heck? Like, did I say something wrong? What happened here? She's like, no, we're good. We're just here to see if you can get two, one under my name and one under, one under my husband's name. We saw the videos. We love, we know that real estate's why we, like we want to invest in real estate. We know why we want to. We also saw the video about this project. We're good to go. Can we just do it under two? Like, can we buy two? And I was like, oh, wow. I looked over to uh, who, director of sales and marketing. She's also kind of the co-host on, uh, uh, on the podcast. And I said, we're on to something. This is it now because the ice has been broken. Like people are coming in here. They've already got a flavor. They got a taste of me. Like after they listen to this podcast, two things are going to happen. They're going to say, that guy's full of bullshit. I hate him. Don't like the way he speaks. Don't like the way he talks. Don't like the color of his skin. Whatever the heck they want to say. And they're never going to come into my life. And that's great. Didn't waste their time. Didn't waste my time. But I also know the other part's going to happen where people are going to say, look, I like this guy's energy. I like that he's very authentic. I like that he's upfront. I want to connect with him. This is who I want to be. I want to do business with. And so having the brand and, and putting out so much content. And that's why it's important to put out a lot of quantity of content. I, I'm just from the school of thought of quality will come through the quantity because you don't know who's going to resonate with what, right? And so get out as much. It's why we do 20 pieces a day. I, it sounds like a lot, but remember, 12 of them could be tweets and 12, six can be stories. You're up at 18 already. You hardly even did anything, right? And so, but if, if, if 20 still sounds too audacious, start with one, start with two a day, because what will happen is you'll connect and the, the right people will connect with you. You're actually going to spend less time. I know it sounds like, wow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of time, but my, my sales uh, appointments have gone down to like 20 minutes. I'm, I'm probably on a call now or in a meeting with somebody for 20 minutes. And you know, we're not doing business 100% of the time. But by the time they get to me, our closing ratio, my specific closing ratio is probably upwards to about 50 to 55%. So somebody's coming in here and they're doing business with me with, like, within that week or it's going to be later on. Yeah, it's amazing to, to, it's almost like you're pre-selling you out in the universe every single day, right? Um, is there, should someone come join a team right now? Should they go on their own in this environment today? 2020, mid-year, post, pre-COVID, wherever the heck we are in this game, you know, Jimmy or Judy, something or another decides to say, you know what, I'm going to go and create what this guy's created. Should they join a team and learn or should they go on their own? 
Well, look, I think I think you have to uh, know who you are. If you're uh, if you're somebody who can uh, uh, lead, um, you, yeah, you can inspire people, and you have this burning burning sense. I mean, like, not just the thought. I would love to have my own team. I mean, like, I can't. I I wouldn't be able to breathe, Rich, if 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 I wasn't at the helm of the media and the sales. I have a business partner. Okay, and he's been a partner of mine for coming up to 15 years now. But if I wasn't able to have the control that I have with what I'm doing, I wouldn't be able to like wake up in the morning. Like I wouldn't be able to breathe, period. So that's in me. It's exactly what I, like the way that I have it set up is exactly the way it needs to be done. If you're somebody who doesn't have that, I would say definitely you should join a team. Why? Because it's just hopefully the team that you choose. It's just fun. And when you're having fun and you're enjoying what you're doing, you're inevitably going to do more business. Yep. It's just going to happen. You have the support. And I think most people, I think it's safe to say, most people are better twos and eights and 47s than they are ones. Because even me, if the media doesn't work, if it didn't pan out, if I don't end up doing sales, I mean, I still have to answer to myself. I, I, and and, and when, when, when something doesn't go right with a client, as much as Tyler and Laura and, 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 and Steven are bought in, they still they have somebody to look to and say, Jazz, yeah, it didn't work out. Like, they're still going to get paid. Right. They're still right. going to get paid, right? right. And, and, and now, my guys, I mean, I'm lucky. These guys are, they care sometimes more than I do about certain things. I'm like, ah, don't worry, it'll fix itself. But they're like, no, no, Jazz, we got it. Like, they're just amazing. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the buck stops here. I don't have anyone else to look for. That's how I look at it, right? And so, and so if you're not that person, definitely join a team. Definitely. Now, start, and don't just go to the first person that, like the first team that you, you, you interview. I want you to interview five, seven different, you'll get the vibe. You'll see who do you, who do you vibe with? Who, who, who's going to, who do you feel is going to support you? Where are you going to have fun? Cause as I mentioned, once you start having fun and this becomes a hobby, you're just bound to do more business. hundred percent. Well, I think our industry is better for having you. I think you're leading the way. I think that when I hear of you, I actually saw one of your listings way up here north of Barry uh, last week. Um, and I believe that people should be listening to you. I interview a lot of people, Jazz, across the country and across the United States. And um, you're doing some tremendous business. Um, your energy is fantastic. And uh, I think we are better for having listened to you today. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rich. And uh, if there's any way that I can return the favor, please let me know. Um, I, I know how hard it is to produce a podcast and content. Um, and we need more people like yourself. And I'm not just saying it because of the kind words you said to me, but um, we need more positivity uh, out in the world, especially the, during the time that we're going through right now. Um, there's so much like civil unrest and, and, and with the pandemic, I mean, at the time of this recording, um, that we need more positivity. We need, we need, we need more people to go and push out positive information so we can drown out all that negative negativity that's out there in the mass media. I think it's time to shut out that, that external noise. When you're, uh, when you launch your book, reach out to us and we'll get you back on. We'll promote your book. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Rich. Thanks for, again for giving us some time. Really appreciate you. And if someone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way? Best place to go to just go to jazztakar.ca. It's J A S T A K H A R. You'll get and you'll find everything. You you decide how you want to consume my content, video, audio, or blog. It's all there. All right. Thank you, my friend. Have yourself an amazing day. Take care, my man. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you like what you've heard and you're interested in seeing if you are fit to work with Peak Results Academy, here's what I want you to do next. Head over to peakresultsacademy.com slash call. That's peakresultsacademy.com slash call and book an appointment to speak with our team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 45 minutes and get you crystal clear on three things. Number one, what do you really want out of life and your business? Number two, what is not working for you today? And number three, the exact strategy you should be using to create massive change in these areas. Remember, changing your life and creating massive results does not happen by itself. 
You need expert guidance to make it happen. We're helping clients all over the world create peak results in their health, in their businesses, and in their personal lives. To see if we can help you do the same, head over to peakresultsacademy.com slash call. We'll chat soon.